Are you ready? Because I'm pretty confident you will not have school one day this week. So it's going to be one day. Yeah. Now, that's not prophetic. That's just me guessing. Okay. Um, it's not looking good. Okay. Uh, hey, I, I need you to tell me what your favorite holiday is on three. Ready? Favorite holiday on three. One, two, three. I heard Christmas like strong. That was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, here's, here's the thing. Um, I, I, love, I love Christmas, too. Christmas is definitely my favorite. And what ends up happening, what ends up happening is um, on Christmas, we, my, at least my family, we eat a huge breakfast. My grandma loves to cook a giant casserole for breakfast. So we eat a giant Christmas special casserole, usually with cinnamon buns. Um, and like, so it's a whole deal. And then, and then um, for lunch slash dinner, we have another family feast. And, um, and my, one of my favorite parts of all of those, hol- like Christmas, Thanksgiving, um, it is just the eating piece, right? I just love, and I love, um, I love more than any of the normal parts of the meal, I love dessert. Um, and so here's the deal. Like, I will, I will, uh, like, space myself out. You know, like, I'll go through, go through the line and be like, all right, a little bit of mashed potatoes, a little bit of turkey, a little bit of corn. And then I'll come back, and I want a piece of every pie. Just all the way, all the way down. And here's the deal. Here's the deal. How many of you have ever eaten to the point of, um, a full, and then you ate a little more. Um, and there's something about there's something about that where we love being full. We love when something is to the fullest. We hate when it's not full. Like think about how terrifying it is when you're when you're doing something and then you see the low battery warning and you're like no, right or or I see, but I hate low battery mode. I'm gonna be honest. I hate low battery mode because it like it throttles all of my work. All right. So the other piece is like you're in the video game and you are down to one bar of health left, and you know like it is not. You're not beating Ganondorf with one heart. You can't do it. You can't do it. Maybe Wes can do it, but I can't do it. Okay. Um. What is so, somebody else? Somebody else. Tell me. What is something else that is terrible when it's empty, better when it's full? Your V-Bucks account? Oh, I like that. Uh, yeah, GG. A power outage? Oh, man, yeah. Your pantry when it's full versus when it's empty. Um, do you know what? Do you know? Actually, I was going to say a swimming pool, but an empty swimming pool is kind of a cool skate park. Um, yeah, what's up? Ooh, your relationship with God. There we go. Your grandma's garage. I like that. All right. Hey, let me tell you something this morning. I want to talk to you about being full. And I want to talk to you about being full of God. Now, here's the deal. The, we, we're supposed to be full of God. God is amazing. If you don't know anything about God, one of the most interesting ways that the Bible describes God is he's three in one, right? And so it's God who is our father, it's God the Son, who we know as Jesus, and, and then it's the, the Holy Spirit. And we're, we're starting a new series today called It's Spiritual, and I want to talk to us a lot about the Holy Spirit, who He is, what He does, what He's like. So the Holy Spirit is incredible. He's part of God. Jesus is part of God. They're three in one, so they've all been together, but 2,000 years ago, Jesus left heaven, and he came to earth. Now, this is I- incredible. Jesus left heaven, but he, he had the fullness of God. He had um, God's power. Like, when you look at the stories of Jesus, did you, it, you, you look at Jesus. I love the, the book of Mark in the Bible, because the book of Mark in the Bible is all about 
um, trying to trying to be like, you've never seen anybody like this before. So every story in Mark is like, and then Jesus walked on water, and immediately after, you'll never believe it, then Jesus healed a guy, and you're like, immediately after, you'll never believe it, right? And it's just thing after thing after thing. It's just full of God's power. And then, Jesus is not just full of God's power, but he's full of God's character. Uh, Jesus, everything he does is is what God would do. And Jesus says, I only do what I see my father doing. But Jesus does it in the way that God does it. I, I think about the scene where Jesus is dying on a cross, betrayed by his friends. He's being murdered. They're, they're ripping his clothes apart to sell them for money. His mom is watching him bleed out. And he says... God, forgive my enemies because they don't even understand what they're doing. Can you, can you think about how much love is baked into Jesus where when he is being killed, he still has love for his enemies? I mean, he's full of God's character. He's full of God's power. He's, he's close to God, in, in fact, everything he does, it's out of love for God. And, and, and you know what was interesting to me is that Jesus wants us to be full like him. In, in fact, in, in John chapter 10, verse 10, it tells us that Jesus' mission on earth was that you and I would be full of God too. It, it says it like this. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Jesus is saying this. He says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the what? Full. Right? So Jesus' goal is that you get full. Now, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Um, there's a part of this that bothers me. Because Jesus wants us to be full uh, of God's power. And he wants us to be full of God's character. And he wants us to be close, like, like tight, intimate, close, loving with God. But here's the problem. I feel like Jesus is cheating. He's God. Right? Like, it doesn't that feel like, doesn't that feel like a little bit like cheating? He's God. He, he, he has God's power. He, he has God's character. He, he's close to God because he is God. Right? Uh, okay. But the Bible tells us that, that Jesus, Jesus wanted to do it the human way. And in Philippians 2, it says this, that Jesus, though he was God, did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. In other words, he decided, hey, I don't have to hold on to all of the privileges. In fact, it says, instead... He gave up his divine privileges, and he took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human. Now watch this. Jesus, though he was God, when he came to earth, he emptied himself of every piece that would have given him a special privilege, that would have given him a cheat code. So that he could do it human like us. Now, how do you go from empty to Jesus who in his life showed us that he's actually full? And then how does he expect us to be full like him? All right, so before we go into that any further... That felt like a good teaser, didn't it? That just felt like, all right, before we go any further, we're going to turn into our tag groups right now. We're going to talk about a couple questions, and we'll be back, all right? Let's do it. All right, y'all, let me get you back. So just to recap, and also because I like doing this, Jesus, Jesus was God, he left heaven, 
He came to earth. The Bible says that he emptied himself, and he was human, just like us. And, and, and the Bible talks about he, he played by our rules. He, he was, the Bible says he was tempted, just like we would be tempted. And, and so um, it wasn't like, um, you know, when we get tempted and, and we can't ever say, well, God has no idea what I'm going through, He's like he does, because Jesus did. And um, he, he faced pain the way that we do. I mean, can you imagine at some point Jesus had a cold, right? Like he, he, Jesus got sick, right? He suffered like we do. Um, mo most people think that, that, that Jesus is um, stepfather or however you want to describe Joseph, um, that he passed away when Jesus was young because Joseph appears in in the story of Jesus' birth, but you never hear about him again, uh, right? So Jesus has gone through, I mean, he's been, he's human just like us. He's gone through the things, but when you read the Bible, you read about Jesus being full. He, he, he does incredible, powerful things. It's God's power. He, he does in, in, incredible acts of kindness and gentleness and goodness, right? Like, and it's God's, God's character, and, and he is, one with his father, even though he's human and on earth. And, and so how is Jesus doing this? And, and, and this takes us to what I think is the, one of the, the most important moments. In fact, it's so important that it's in all four of the stories of Jesus, where um, it, it's in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's a, it's a scene at the beginning of each of those books. And what's interesting, when you read the stories of Jesus, Je they start around age 30. Like Jesus, his story really starts, I mean, he had a, an incredible, miraculous birth. It's, it's amazing. He has one story when he's 12 years old, and he's just so in love with the church that his parents accidentally leave him behind at church, right? Can you imagine just a, like a J-Boxer like you being so in love with church that your parents leave, and they don't even notice, and you're just like, oh, I just love church so much, right? That's a, now, some of you would leave just for the ping pong, but, um, but no, Jesus, everything else starts after this moment. Say what moment? It's a moment that Jesus is baptized. So here's what happens. Jesus, um, Jesus is around 30 years old, and, 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 and there's a guy who has been by this river, and every day he preaches, and when people want to respond to his sermon, he says, all right, come on down. I'm going to shove your head underwater and pull you back up. And everybody does it, and it's called baptism. And so everybody is going, and they're going to John, and they're getting baptized, but Jesus goes to get baptized, and something special happens. In Luke chapter 3, verse 21, it says, one day when the crowds were being baptized, Jesus himself was baptized, and as he was praying, the heavens opened, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who's the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the, the person of God. We're going to tell you a little more about him in a second, but it says the Holy Spirit in bodily form descended on Jesus like a dove and a voice from heaven, who's God the Father, said, you're my dearly loved son and you bring me great joy. And the very next verse says, then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. So here's the deal. This moment is the moment in which Jesus, who had emptied himself of every divine pri privilege, was filled with the Spirit of God. And as soon as he was filled with the Spirit of God, then things started to change. Because it says immediately he was led by the Spirit. A and Jesus goes and he's led by the Spirit. And then um, when he comes out of the wilderness, he starts performing miracles. And he starts teaching and people are amazed by what they see, what they hear, who he is, what he does, what he's like. They're just amazed by everything. Why? Because the Holy Spirit came and filled Jesus. And here's the deal. The Holy Spirit is a gift to us. 
In fact, when Jesus is on earth, his disciples are like, you're amazing, Jesus. Can we keep you forever? And Jesus goes, actually, no, not even for a long time. Like, I'm, I'm going to be dead in less than three years-ish, right? And Jesus goes, Jesus goes, okay, um, actually, I'm going to die, but when I leave, I'll send you the Spirit. Now, what does the Spirit do? Well, it does everything we've been talking about so far. The, the Spirit gives us power. And, and, and I don't mean like electricity, and I don't mean like super strength. Um, although, the Bible has some powerful gifts that the Bible talks about. First Peter Chapter 4 says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Now, here's the deal. I already asked. All of you love Christmas. So here's the deal. How many of you want a gift from God? Um, how many of you know that there's nobody in your world who could give you a better gift than God could give you a gift? Right? Like, yeah, like, here's the deal. God is going. So we want God's gifts. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit gives you a gift. I want the Holy Spirit. I want to. All right. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit gives us God's character. And, and, and listen, that might not sound as exciting, but it's, it's amazing. Galatians 5.22 says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. There's no law against these things. Now, here's the deal. <clears throat> How many of you have ever been in trouble before? If your hand's not up, you're a liar. And yeah, we've all been in trouble. Um, can I promise you something? You have never been in trouble because you were doing these things in a perfect balanced mixture. You've ne never has that happened. In fact, more likely and than not, the, that you, you were doing something that was the opposite of these things, and it got you in trouble. All right, so here's the deal. God's character in you is formed by his spirit, and it produces something in you that is better, that is good, that is actually perfect. We, I want God's spirit at work in me. I don't like making mistakes in life. I don't like messing up. I don't like doing wrong things because I always pay the consequences. So if I could have God's spirit at work transforming me, oh, this would be amazing. Then it says God's closeness comes from the spirit. Romans 8, 14, all who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. Literally, my relationship with God is connected to my relationship with the Holy Spirit. Now, here's the deal. I want the Holy Spirit in my life. But there is a major, major problem. See, see the problem is, is that many people want the, the, the things of, of God without God. So many people want, like, God's character, but not God. Or they want God's gifts, but not God. Or they want to live life, and they want life to be good with, without God. And the problem is that you and I are actually terrible containers of the goodness of God. And, and, and the problem is that no matter how much we, we, we try, we actually just, we can't contain it. Why? Because we're broken. Why? Because we sinned. And, and the Bible describes that sin actually separates us. We, we actually can't have the closeness with God. We can't have the connection with God. We can't have any of those things. And what's interesting is that the Bible says that Jesus came to be our substitution. Like Jesus came to be our solution and what, what the Bible describes is that he covers us. And, and see, when Jesus covers us, then it's actually in Jesus that we can contain the fullness of God. Watch this. In Colossians chapter 2, it says, In Christ, the fullness of God lives in a body or human form, 
and in Christ, you have been brought to fullness. In other words, because of Jesus, you and I can contain the fullness of God, not because it's in us, but because we're in Jesus. Does this make sense? Now, so here's the deal. I love everything that the Holy Spirit does, but I cannot have the Holy Spirit without Jesus. And, and I love everything that the Holy Spirit represents, but if I don't have Jesus, it doesn't matter because Jesus is what heals me, makes me whole, creates in me a vessel for the Spirit of God to dwell. And so this morning, j -box, the most important thing is a check in our hearts and in our lives to say, have I let Jesus be the Lord of my life? In, in, in another word, in Colossians 2, is my life in Christ? In, in, in another way, have I allowed the spirit of Jesus to live in my heart? Okay, there, there's, the Bible has different ways of saying this. Ultimately, the idea is this, is, is have you surrendered to Jesus? That's the question. 